OMG Take 5. Hello, hello. So a while back I did an episode, I'll definitely put it in the show notes, about eating gluten-free and really all about gluten, not even necessarily eating gluten-free, but what's the deal with gluten? Should we be avoiding it? Should we not? How do we know? When do we know? All the things. That was episode 46 of the podcast, if you happen to be looking. And now I want to just throw in a little Friday reminder. If you are planning to be gluten-free or mostly gluten-free, and again, go back and listen to why that might be something you would want to do, you want to be careful with what you choose to eat. And this, I think, applies to those of us who don't eat meat as well or don't eat something else. The substitutes are not usually that much healthier. So if I mostly am going to eat gluten-free, which is the case, that is what I do. I feel like when I eat gluten, it makes me very sleepy. Then I have kind of two ways I could take that path. I could decide that I'm going to just take out some of these processed carbs in general from my diet. And instead I could do brown rice and sweet potatoes as my carbs and that kind of thing. And I could do more vegetables and I could do lean proteins and just not have the bread or the bun or the cereal or whatever it is. That's one way to go. The other way to go is I could go and look for, and these are widely available now, and I know that uh, knowing someone well who has celiac, which means absolutely no gluten, and knowing another person who has an allergy, it used to be really hard to find gluten-free products, and that is not the case anymore, which is wonderful. So I could go and I could find gluten-free bread and gluten-free buns and gluten-free donuts and gluten-free pizza and gluten-free everything. And I could just add those all into my diet and have my gluten-free snacks and whatever. That's the second way to do it. So take a guess as to which way is healthier. Now, if you have an allergy or you have celiac disease, go for it. Grab all the gluten-free you want. That is a, a challenge to be in a situation where you have to make sure to take care of your health. If you're doing this, however, for your health, I want you to think what would be the healthier choice? Grab the gluten-free bread or just not have the bread. And I feel like when I say this, you're going to think, Cheryl, I do not want to hear you on a Friday tell me I don't want to have bread because I do want to have bread and it's been a long week. (laughs) And this is why I say I'm mostly gluten-free. You know what? Sometimes have the cookie or the cake or whatever. I do use gluten-free pasta. I have one that I love called Tinkiata that is made from brown rice. So not a lot of extra stuff in there. It's brown rice and water. And I do eat gluten-free things, but I try not to make that be my primary tool. I try to add vegetables. I try to use rice. I try to use protein instead of always looking for a substitute. And if you're old enough to remember the fat-free craze, I feel like this was maybe 20 years ago, 10, 15, I'm not exactly sure, when there were fat-free cookies and there were fat-free muffins. And oh my goodness, I was working in an office building where there was a sort of coffee deli place in the first level. And we used to take a morning break, all the analysts and I, and go down and get a drink or get a muffin. And they had fat-free peanut butter and jelly muffins. I still, oh my goodness, I still dream about those. Now, clearly I wasn't gluten-free at that time, but I'm sorry. There, I just wonder if that fat-free peanut butter and jelly muffin was really fat-free. But anyway, I digress. We learned after a while that all those fat-free things were probably not any better for us because they were high in sugar. They had to add in other things to compensate for the lack of fat to make it taste good. And this can happen with gluten-free items as well. As I said at the beginning, it's anything where we've processed the food in a way to take out something but still make it taste good. And really the key is to minimize all that processing whenever you can. So have the gluten-free treats if you want them, have the non-gluten-free treats if you can, 
but make that be a treat, a 20% part of what you eat, not an 80% part, because it's much, much, much healthier for all of us if we eat the veggies and we eat the lean protein and we eat the nuts and seeds and we eat the healthy fats instead of the processed free of this and free of that items. So have a think about that next time you're choosing a snack or next time you're choosing your meal and see if maybe you feel any better after eating a little bit differently. Talk to you soon. 